Welcome to the R video tutorial on principal components analysis. In this video, you'll learn how to do principal components analysis in R. Okay, so let's get going. The first thing I'm going to do is set my working directory, and I'm doing this differently than I've done in other videos because you need to learn a little bit about working directories. Basically, what a working directory is is where you want to save all of your work, and where do you want R to save the image of all of your work. Uh, it also helps in having to not write out long paths if you decide that you're going to do anything like read files in where you're specifying the path. So anyway, you can use the set WD to set whatever path you want to a working directory. Now it's not necessary, but it's something you should get familiar with. Okay, now that I've set the working directory, now I'm just going to read in some data. And the data I have is in arctotaldata2.csv. It's a, just a standard CSV file, and I'm using the read.csv to read it in. The data set has pretty cryptic labeling, so what I'm going to do is first subset the data that I only want out of here, and then I'm going to change the column names to something that I can keep track of. So I'm going to do this all in one step. So I'm going to use the C bind to extract the columns that I want into a new data frame. And then I'm going to take and change the names of those columns. And the columns names are listed in this vector here of C, buff, H2O, iFlow, IFLS, IDO, IDS. Now that we have the data set up, we can start doing something useful with it. The first thing I want to do is some pairwise scatter plots that you've seen in a previous video. Okay, so we have our picture here of our pairwise scatter plots, and as you can see, a lot of these variables are highly correlated with each other, and that's really when you want to use principal components analysis, is to try to take high dimensional data that is highly correlated and reduce the dimensionality. If you notice across buffer, it's highly correlated with H2O, iFlow, IFLS. Doesn't seem to be so much with IDO, but it does seem to be with IDS. And many others are highly correlated as well. But this gives you a sense about how correlated things are. Okay, so now we can go and actually perform the PCA. There are two different ways to do this in R. There's PR comp and then there's print comp. I'm just using print comp as an example. PR comp syntax is very similar. You can look it up in the help. All right, so in P print comp, the first argument is your data set. The second argument I have here, scores equals true, which means it will take my data and transform it into the reduced space or the transformed space so that I can work with my data there and possibly uh, transform it back later, or maybe not. I'm also using core equals true so that it uses the correlation matrix instead of the covariance matrix to do this. And then I'm going to run a summary. OK, so it ran. Notice that it gives me my six components, because there were six variables. But it tells me the standard deviation associated with each of these components. And it also tells me the proportion of the variance that that component comprises of the total variance. And notice that component one comprises 79% of the total variation in the data set. So it looks as though component one is very, very, very strong. Also notice that component two comprises 16%. Then if you look at component three, it's only 2%, and even less for the remaining components. And these components are always listed in a decreasing fashion so that the highest one is principal component number one. You might want to see a plot of this because lots of people like pictures and you can use just plot arc.pca1 and this produces what is known as a scree plot and what it does is it just gives you the standard deviations or the variances actually of each of the components and you can see component one is really standing out there component two is much smaller and then component three four five and six are really really small 
So in this case, if you were doing dimension reduction, you might say, okay, I'll keep the first two components. Everything else I don't need to worry about because it explains 95% of the variation. Another thing you might want to do is look to see how they're correlated or how the directions of these components sort of agree or disagree with each other. So what we're going to do is run what's called a biplot, and we can use this statement here to run a biplot. Okay, so here in this plot, you see these red lines, and that's really what you're looking at. The other things that are kind of hard to read are the actual observation numbers and where those observations fall in relation to component one and component two. And if you notice that almost all of the red lines point in the same direction, you can read IFLO there. They're all pointing in the same direction, which means they're all essentially aligning on that component, except for IDO. Some other things you might want to do are look at the loadings associated with the principal components. All right, so here are the loadings. I'm not really going to talk about the loadings because you should be learning about this in your statistics class that you're taking. However, this is the way you get the loadings. And the other thing you may want are the scores, and the scores are the rotated or uh, transformed data set. So if I run this, all it's going to do is show me the transform data set. And you can see the end of it here. Because my data set's so big, it's hard to present it on here. So this has been the R video tutorial on principal components analysis in R. If you have any questions, please ask or watch the next video.